After slaying Leviathan 2,300 times, I got the lore to make the Soul Reaper Axe. Finally, we can use this mysterious weapon and see where its potential lies. I will be uncovering the mainstream and the more hidden uses of the Soul Reaper Axe so I can see where it will help me with my future boss and grinds and of course share my findings with the community. So today's episode is going to cover a lot of actual progress on top of the progress of gaining more knowledge with this new item. For the casual viewers, the Soul Reaper Axe is unlike any other weapon. It is fun to use because it hits like a truck and has its own built-in special attack. That might be all the reasons you need to want to check it out. But let's talk about the weapon stats and how its unique ability works. So the weapon's base stats are pretty good, high slash and high strength with a modest attack speed of 5 ticks aka 3 seconds. The weapon gets stronger as you attack with it. Every attack you do will charge the axe up to 5 charges, but you lose 8 HP every time it gains a charge. Every charge gives the axe 6% extra damage. Every 6 seconds you are out of combat though will decrease the charge by 1. And if you swap weapons, the charge will reset. So generally, you want to keep the axe on max charges to keep the 30% damage boost as long as possible. It also has its own separate special attack that does not impact the regular special attack. Unleashing the special attack called Behead will release the charges and give back the storage HP to you and the attack will be more accurate and stronger. Let me go into detail of my findings in specifically three major areas. General training uses, slayer uses, and bossing uses. We're going to start off with the Soul Reaper Axe versus bosses. Here is a list of bosses though I've tested that might be worth considering using the Soul Reaper Axe at. The bosses listed at the top are really good to use with the Soul Reaper Axe. The bosses closer to the bomb are bosses where if you really have no other weapons, the Soul Reaper Axe could be your last resort kind of deal. Most bosses in this list though are typically second or third best in slot for melee options. The Soul Reaper Axe though is best in slot at one place currently and that is normal for Dovis. Whenever you are using the Axe for bossing, I highly recommend using a Blood Fury or at least bring it as a side switch. In addition to the Blood Fairy, some bosses, you might even want to consider combining that with Sire of God's Respects or Zara's God's Respects because the axe will make you lose more light points to charge the weapon and when you accidentally lose a charge, which will happen quite a bit when you go bossing, you'll have to regain it, meaning you effectively lose 8 HP for every mistake. Blood Fairy though is the most important one as it will keep your HP comfy when using the axe for most bossing. It's also important to understand that this weapon requires extra practice to achieve good results on the bosses I show in this video. Compared to most weapons, definitely don't expect good performances at any of these bosses right away, as this weapon is definitely the most complicated weapon out there. Unless they make some changes, which I wouldn't be surprised about. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. So let's talk about Fardovis first as our first boss because the Sword Axe is best in slot there, and also because it happens to be the thing that I've been grinding. I'm mainly looking for the Ultra Fistage to make the Ultra Ring, which is the better version of the Berserker Ring, best in slot strength ring, and the pet in the future. So how do I use the axe on Fardovis? The main strategy is to camp the axe as long as I can during the fight to maximize the axe's boosted damage while it's charged up. When it comes to use special attacks in combination with the axe, it is best to use the spec weapon either at the start of the fight or towards the end of the fight. Typically, I like to use the axe special and gain back my 40 HP when Fardovis is around 50 to 200 HP, as I am usually low HP by then. Next, I use my spec weapon and fang to finish off the rest of the kill if the boss still has over like 100 life points left. It is not worth me charging the axe with such little HP, because I'm probably just going to waste my HP. Just make sure to use your axe spec though before it dies because if you don't, you'll lose 2 charges minimum while waiting for the next spawn, which will be 16 HP wasted. Keep in mind when you are eating with hard food, I only recommend eating 1 food between hits because if you eat too much in a row and you get too long of a cooldown, you will lose an axe charge, meaning you waste HP. Also, when Fardovis does his capture attack, 
right clicking the boss and clicking attack right before the capture start helps to ensure you don't lose a charge it also tends to be more efficient at that boss more dps also keep in mind these strategies are mostly universal when using the soul reaper axe in a lot of pvm oh i got a new pp again what how am i pp'ing still <laughs> all right i got a 48 second kill all right let's go okay a whole tick faster or something right? okay oh yes nice that is uh i want to say ingot number eight yeah it's our eighth one let's go yeah see i gotta learn how to do that consistently but we're getting we're getting better we're getting better and i love the czar's gods are here so freaking good yeah perfect for specking at the start because then the boss hits you a little bit you might need a divine at the start and also, this axe is going to continuously drain your life points. And then the Zardos got sort gets you a quick 25 back. Very nice. The Blood Fairy works so well with the axe because it hits so high. And every hit only uses one charge. So that's not going to drain your Blood Fairy super fast, which is extra nice. But basically, I hit like 75, right? So if I proc off of 75, it will take 30% of that and give it back to my HP. So... I'll literally be getting 25 HP back off of that. And my average hit at that point is like a 37. So 30% 30 of a 37 would be like healing, I guess, 12 HP on an average hit when it procs. So that's really, really good. Yep. <clears throat> oh, I got a Chromian Ingot. Let's go. Yes, I think I have nine now total. Well, I've had nine drops total of this. So I need to get three more and then I can make all four rings once I get their uh, rings icon pieces, the main ones. Like, watch this. You see that combo? I gotta learn how to do that. <laughs> Basically, for hard mode, so we're getting better at things like that. Alright, I'm gonna add a blood shard to the blood fury. Actually, let's add another one. Because it can hold 30k. Also, we're not gonna use the scythe for the last, like, 10-20%, to 20 just because... I'm wasting blood runes, honestly. Like, Fang and Scythe is almost the exact DPS at that boss. And uh, with the Fang, I use half the amount of blood for your charges. So, gonna need these blood shards for Varvis if uh, we end up going crazy dry. <laughs> I gotta be ready for anything. Oh, hell yeah, dude. I was about to teleport, too. Yo, pretty cool guys, 85 million defense, uh, I just opt to train defense usually because if I'm PVMing, I'm always either on uh, strength or maybe accurate, sentinel is not a big deal, so we just put that on defense, don't want to, you know, put on strength of course, save the attack for slayer. Oh hell yeah, let's go blood shard. Oh hell yeah dude, we got two blood shards today, let's go. On top of Blood Fairies, I also need to fish things like Anglerfish, so I've been doing a lot of fishing. And while I'm fishing, I'm also playing another game that's all about fishing too. Fishing Clash is a seriously addictive game that revolves around becoming the best fisherman there ever was. I've been really enjoying the progress of this game as it allows me to fish so many different kinds of fish. There are so many nuances to how you can improve your account from improving the rod itself, the lures, the skill trees, getting different fishing licenses, and unlocking the various fisheries to catch different types of fish. There's also a bunch of cool fishing activities to compete in like fishing group competitions to see who gets the best quality fish and even fast paced one on one duels with other fishermen too. My favorite activity to do is definitely the fishing competitions I can do every few hours for some nice rewards to improve my account. Just expanding your fishing collection is super addictive too as there's so many types of fish for you to catch in this game. Immerse yourself in the life of a fisherman and have a ton of fun playing Fishing Clash. Download the game by using my link in the description box or scan the QR code you see on the screen and use my special gift code RICECUP. Again, that is RICECUP, same as YouTube, to get a $20 value reward for free. With my gift code, you'll get a unique avatar, one mythical lore card, 50 luck power-ups, and 30 weight power-ups to help you catch bigger fish. See you guys at the fisheries. 19970, 19952, so only 18 charges that kill. 
So I used 18 charges on a pretty good kill. So let's just say average kill. Let's say 25 charges. If it's 25 charges on average, that means one blood shard would be about 400 for Dover's kills. That's pretty good, honestly. Holy shit, look at that. 78 damage. 78 with the spec. So many different axe variations and all that. Ooh, Onyx Bolt's perfect on that. Let's go. Oh yeah, there we go. 700 KC though. Hopefully we are getting somewhat close to the ring. Oh! Oh my god, I got it. Nice. I got the uh I got the berserker ring upgrade. Okay, let's go. <gasps> Nani? Bro, I just completed Virtus. Yo, what the hell on the same trip? Holy shit. I I thought I was gonna have to do like four uh, all four rings to get from Virtus, but Well then I um I didn't have to. I just had to complete two rings. Holy that's actually insane. Okay, man. That's actually crazy, man. <laughs> In the same trip, too. What the hell? Well, okay, I guess our RNG just, you know, is 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 back. You know, we're, we're on fire now. Holy. But yeah, we do have the full Furtis now, though. Looks pretty cool. Alright, let me take this off. Let me see if the stat info shows. Oh, right there. Increase your max hit of your magic attacks. Oh, by 3% apiece. Wait, hold on. Let's see the set effect. Okay, it doesn't say anything, but... Accuracy is the same. The only difference is the magic damage. Ancestral's base is 6%, whereas this base is 3%. Oh, I, I guess it's 3% plus 9%, so it's 12% on Ancients. I'll definitely cover the Virtus a bit more when I start actually using it for myself, for uh, personal goals. So, probably expect the Hidden Power of Faux Virtus video at some point. Greenlock Leviathan now. Oh shit, that's right. Yo, check this out. Leviathan should be greenlocked. Yeah, it is, because the share items that is Virtus <laughs> is uh it's done. So crazy. Oh, that's right. I gotta freaking create the altar icon. There we go. I forgot about that. You gotta combine that first. There we go. And now we've made the ultra ring new best in slot strength ring as you can see this thing gives 12 strain bonus which is absolutely crazy now uh let's go ahead and test some max hits we got 51 new max okay what about this love here still 51 wow that's crazy a lot of these are like the same every time and then Blev Saldor, which is the same as the Mace and, and the Rapier, 55-6. Okay, so Torture gets an extra max hit. Alright, what about Claws here? Anything changing? No, 45? 44, okay, so with Torture, it's 45. I'm assuming this ring gave it an extra max hit, so that's really good. Alright, let's try Void Waker. 79 and then Torture is what is it an 80 yet 79 still is the same okay and finally let's use the scythe 50 okay and then blood fairy still 50 wow so the only weapon that the torture and the blood fairy makes a difference is basically the claws basically claws and i think maybe maybe this weapon maybe the blade of saldor and the equivalents yeah that's it just claws and blade of saldor the mace and the rapier Oh, there it is. Wow, already. There we go. 75 max. Holy sh It's real. Oh, 79. Holy shit. I guess that's the special attack max hit now. Oh, we can absorb. Nice. We're almost at 70, or 70 orbs. Oh, yeah. So, we got the new ultra ring, too. So, when I'm going to just AFK... Things like Fire Sentinels is going to be slightly better because I'm getting an extra max in most likely uh, for the blood shards and stuff. And yeah, this is going to be really, really good for General Slayer too. And a lot of PVM when I'm not using Light Bear. Uh, there is the Belter Ring, but we'll talk more about the Belter, of course, when we get it. But yeah, for, for the most part, Ultra Ring is definitely most of our melee situation rings. 
going forward. I've gotten quite good at Verdovis now. I'm averaging over 30 kills an hour, mainly because I know how to optimize the med DPS and I am skipping all the axes so I can uh, stay for a long time, regardless if I get food drops or not. But yeah, I'm feeling pretty confident for the hard mode when it's time to go for the Blood Torva. Pretty soon we will be going for that, but I want to make sure I'm at least solid at all four of the regular versions. Sometimes I can camp the axe the whole way through just because I heal a lot with blood fear or the boss doesn't hit me much and I'm not making mistakes. In that case, I just use the spec at the very end to finish it off. Boom, spec kill. Bye. Oh, yes. Another chromium ingot. Let's go. Uh, let me see. Let me see. How many do we got? Let's quickly check here. We have 10. Nice. Just two more. Oh, nice. Yo, we just hit 900 Vardo. Yeah, today's the last day we're going to be here for a bit. Just wanted to sharpen up for the hard mode. And I think we're pretty much as ready as we can be for the practice for uh, moving on to the hard mode. So that's about the wrap up for the main progress of today's video with Desert Treasure 2 stuff. In the next video, we will be working on that Blood Torva. So look forward to it. And hopefully you guys have seen how good this axe can be at Ferdovis. Now it's time to move on to the other bosses and show you where this axe is useful in other aspects of this game. You guys saw that move, dude? God damn. That's, that's the practice paying off. That's what. Next I want to talk about is Smoke Devil Boss. Surprisingly really good there. This boss is a simple fight and it's weak to slash. Food or redemption methods are fine with the axe. I do recommend walking under the boss every hit so you can minimize the damage taken. Redemption method with prayer potions is a bit nicer if you can't afford it. But it is easily second via asset smoke devil. Just make sure you use your axe spec when the boss is around 30-50 HP to get your HP back. Or otherwise you'll waste your food. If the special doesn't kill the boss then just keep attacking to gain a charge and then spamming that special till it is dead so you can regain the HP back. You can use the axe special even if you only have like one charge. As long as you have a charge, it's good. It will only be a 6% damage boost, but it's low HP anyway, so it doesn't really matter what you hit. The goal is just not to waste HP. This particular strategy to spec at the end of a boss fight will be used for many of the other bosses mentioned just to save HP with the axe. I did manage to do 90 kills an hour on my first ever try of smoke devils with this axe, which is really good. It's definitely better than like my Blade of Saldor. I don't think it'll beat the scythe though, but it should be pretty close behind it. I think you can do even more than what I was doing if you actually uh, use redemption method and bring prayer pots to stay forever. But yeah, 90 with food is pretty good. Next boss I want to talk about is Cerberus. Cerberus is not very tanky, so your Sorber Axe won't miss too often on Crush. It does have a Crush style, and you don't really need to worry about losing charges mid-fight as this boss does not stop you from attacking basically ever. From testing, I managed to get a comfy 50 kills an hour. I'd say it's second best in slot for melee options, similar to Inquisitor Mace and Behind the Scythe. Just basic strategy to use the Axe spec to KO the boss, and use your regular spec weapon at the start. Preferably, Zaro's God Sword Blood Fairy backup works really well with the Sword Bear Axe here, and makes the HP maintenance very chill. I also highly recommend doing 2 to 1 attack method, which means you hit the boss twice, and as soon as the second hit goes through, you go under the boss and wait for your weapon cooldown to be worn off before you attack again. This way, the boss only attacks you one time for every time you do two hits, and it will also stall the boss's ghost ability, which will decrease your prayer or HP, and overall take way less damage too. Alright, watch this. We're gonna use the spec and get everything back. And it should kill it because it's low HP. Watch this. I'm gonna skip this 100%. Yeah, another uh, ghost skip. Three in a row. Oh, 85. Nice. That's our auto max. With uh, best in slot gear. 85. Oh my god. 83 spec KO. No way. <laughs> I was just trolling. I really didn't think I was gonna finish it off. Next is Seragnus. I would say it's overall third BIS for melee options behind the mace and the scythe. It's a bit annoying to use because sometimes the web mechanic will get you out of combat for too long and you lose a charge. This issue can be mitigated a bit by hitting the minion while you're on the web. But overall, it's pretty easy to use here. Ooh, okay, damn. Slash is definitely way better, dude. I'm getting 40 kills an hour right now with Slash. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely use Slash on this boss if you are going to use the Solby Brass. Because holy shit. I'm getting 40 kills an hour versus like 45. So. And we've spent the same amount of time now. With uh, both styles. At the end of the day, it really comes down to the actual stats of the boss. And my stats. The boss's overall defense isn't too high. So the axe having a much higher slash accuracy over its crush is actually better for this boss even though technically crushes his weakness vedion and calvarian is a decent shout with sober axe i only recommend this if you don't have the figures mace or inquisitor mace it's probably similar to a bludgeon so maybe if you're bored and you want a different option sober axe will work fine it is a bit sketchy though because the start of every fight will put you down for hp due to charging so it can make it easier for pkers to have a stronger start against you kill times were around two minutes so definitely nowhere near the figures mace times a lot of people asked about using Sword Brax a Nightmare, so I went ahead and tried it out, even though from my beta test, it was not that crazy. But I did average under 8 minutes per kill with the Sword Brax with BAS gear, fastest being 7 minutes flat, the slowest being 8 minutes and 39 seconds. Overall, third best in slot at Nightmare, but it is super tricky to use properly due to having to recharge throughout each phase. If not used properly, it's definitely worse than Bludgeon. In particular, every time the HUD spawns during the melee parts of the fight, you lose a lot of time axing them instead of switching to a quick weapon, which isn't worth it as it will reset your axe charges. Make sure you angler fish up before charging each phase because charging will put you at a dangerously low HP where the boss can one-shot you if you make a mistake. All in all, I only recommend this axe at Nightmare if you don't have a bludgeon, mace, or scythe. Well, the Sober Axe is pretty nice for clearing Parasites, though, I'll tell you that. But not not during the Pillars, though, because you have to charge up and all that stuff, so you don't you don't want to do that, but... Oh, fuck. Okay, you know what I can do? This works, too. So that way, we don't waste our life points. We can actually axe the totem. So in case you accidentally miss specking the boss at the end and you've already phased it, well, at the very least, you, you do have that option. Oh, seven minutes. Well, keep in mind, guys, I do have literally the, the best gear available. And we're testing the axe with it. So seven minutes. That's uh, pretty good. Looks uh, it's looking pretty good right now. 712, really? Even fa Okay, that's good. Damn, a lot of seven minutes, actually. 712. It's fair to say with Inquisitor at the very least to help the Axe's low crush, it's better than the Bludgeon. But without Inquisitor, I don't think so. It might just be about the same, if not worse. Let's talk about raids, specifically top with Sawyer Brax. It is pretty decent, specifically if you do not have a Scythe. But it is only worth it at a few bosses there, Maiden, Nilo King, Sarpist, and Furzik. Since these bosses do not stop you from being out of combat, it will act like a budget scythe, basically. The Blood Fairy side switch is super necessary for axing at top since you don't want to keep your HP low in those rooms. And when axing Nalo King, make sure the second hit you do is with the axe special though. So you deal more damage and you get your HP back before you switch weapons for its next phase change. Axe is really good on the Red Spider minions too at Maiden and Furzik, probably beating even the Scythe since it's only a 2x2 two two mob, so the Scythe cannot go for 3 hits. Alright, I need to be smart and I just use the spec right now like that, because uh, because if I teleport without using my spec, I'm losing all my HP. Like I said, for Blow and for Dark Beast, these two bosses force you out of combat pretty often, so it's a little too annoying to use the axe. So I recommend just sticking with a regular weapon like the Fang. Whip or Blade for Blow will work perfect. Soul Reaper Axe seemed pretty usable at Chambers too. The Soul Reaper Axe is basically a budget scythe at Cox. I wouldn't really recommend in Souls though, as it makes Ohm Souls even more challenging. And players will have better weapons. That are easier to get or cheaper to get like a uh, lance for ohm and fang for tecton for example for groups it should be pretty damn good though for tecton and ohm mainly because the fence will be lowered since multiple people have spec weapons and you don't need to employ any soul strategies making the axe super easy to use in groups just make sure to use the axe spec at the end of every transition of tecton and ohm phase so you can get hp back so for regular training i'll keep it brief 
The Soul Reaper Axe has the highest theoretical DPS out of all the melee weapons for your regular melee training at places like Nightmare Zone and Ammonite Crabs. It will be pretty easy to sustain the weapon's charge requirements as you will be constantly attacking using auto retaliate so no real special things to keep in mind for regular afk training other than maybe bring some extra food if you somehow lose charges now let's talk about slayer uses because this axe has the highest theoretical melee damage out of all the weapons it also means that for your average meleeable slayer task like bloodfills for example it should theoretically be the best dps meaning the best xp and slayer xp I recommend using something like an SGS for regular Slayer because you will take more damage in general due to charging stacks requiring life points and a lot of times you will accidentally lose a charge and have to regain it simply because you're not paying attention. The SGS is perfect for quickly gaining back your lost HP. Having additional healing options will make using the Soul Reaper Axe a lot smoother. Keep in mind to use the Axe spec before switching to a spec weapon though like a SGS because you can gain up to 5 stacks worth of HP which means up to 40 HP healed back if you swap weapons without using the spec the charges resets remember that and you will not get the HP back I don't recommend using it if you do a lot of AFK slayer training because you will lose charges for being out of combat for too long meaning you'll lose a lot of HP and lowering your damage but on tasks where the monster constant attacks you like diagonals it's perfectly fine to just full afk basically with the soul reaper axe i put a table showing you all the tasks that the soul reaper axe could be good at the best ones are definitely mutated blood veils i can get up to 40k slayer xp an hour with best in slot gear the worst are things like trolls and ankus that's probably uh 20 to 30k slayer xp an hour and uh, also you'll see the melee xp rates Remember, I am looking at these rates with best in slot gear. So if you have things like Bandos, for example, or Fire Cape, expect a 10%, 15% less rates than you see on this graph. But it'll still be the best of the best. And also keep in mind, NPCs with low HP like Ankus, honestly, you're probably better off with faster weapons like a Whip or a Rapier, just because the axe is quite slow, so faster weapons will do better. The Soul Reaper Axe, as long as you put in the effort, it should be better than other weapons like Rapier by a few percents for Slayer. All in all, Soul Reaper Axe is best in Slayer of Ardovis. It acts as a budget scythe in some places like Top, Cox, Thermi, and Serb. It also is overall the best melee Slayer Axe weapon in the game, provided you don't AFK too hard. There's some other bosses where it's third BAS, and I would not heavily recommend using them in those places because there's usually better options and only recommend as a last resort. Personally, I would love to see Jagex change the way charges work because right now it's way too restrictive. Effectively, it has two drawbacks that constantly makes it difficult to use. The first one, swapping weapons instantly making you lose all your charges the second one is losing a charge of your out of combat for five to six seconds i think both of these make sense in pvp but in pvm having both together is way too restrictive and it makes the weapon less fun and the potential for it being better at a lot of bosses goes down the loss of a charge for not being in combat for five seconds is definitely the worst one for pvm you are effectively punished because a boss mechanic decides to force you out of combat there are so many bosses where this axe could be better, but it keeps losing charges though due to some random boss mechanic. For example, it could be really good at blow and so to say, but both bosses forces you out of combat for so long that by the time you can attack it again, you have to recharge it all over again to regain maximum power. So as you can tell, it definitely is not fun having to deal with that mechanic. I propose that in PVM, instead of losing a charge for being out of combat for 5-6 to six seconds, you should just lose all your charges if you're out of combat for one whole minute. This way, you don't get punished for things that aren't within your control in a boss fight. Swapping weapons drawback is still manageable and can be left as is, as long as that particular timer penalty gets extended, basically. This weapon requires 3,000 boss kills on average to complete and Desert Treasure 2 completion. I don't think these restrictions makes much sense at all for such a difficult to grind item, especially because it's not going to surpass the scythe anyways. So I would say it definitely deserves to be a bit better just because of the effort it takes. Don't forget to scan my QR code and download Fishing Clash to become the best fisherman ever.